Hi guys, hope you're well. Today's video is very interesting, especially perfect for all the picky eaters and parties and holidays. Uh, we're going to be making six different flavors of cake using one recipe and one pan and it's going to be really amazing. The cake is super soft and all the flavors turn out extremely well. The written recipe is mentioned in the description box below. First I have butter here. It's softened butter. Um, uh, you want to whip it till it's nice and creamy and then you'll be adding in your sugar if you don't have a fine granuled one uh, you can simply grind it up don't use the, uh, the the crystals that are super super thick then we're going to be adding eggs in there three eggs in total but you're going to be adding them one at a time um, incorporate one and then Mix it up and then uh, incorporate the other ones until you're done with all three eggs. Don't over whip it just until they're blended in the butter and the sugar mixture. Once that is done, we're going to be adding some vanilla essence. Uh, if you're using one single flavor, you can use another flavor too like lemon or strawberry. Any flavor that you want to add to it. Use a spoon or a spatula to see if there is anything unmixed and next we're gonna be adding our dry ingredients and alternating them with some buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk you can use sour cream or yogurt. I'm using buttermilk at the moment and my dry ingredients were sifted and I mixed them beforehand and you want to alternate them with the wet yogurt or sour cream it that ensures that the cake turns out super soft and delicious and i'm not mixing it too much just until they're nicely uh, incorporated if you still find them a little bit lumpy just whisk them up with your uh, machine and count till five but no longer than five seconds now coming to the flavors the first flavor i have here is a classic coffee cake and the next one is gonna be a chocolate cake i have here some cocoa powder and i'm adding in my mixture the butter cake mixture um, if you find at any point that the chocolate cake mixture is getting super thick, you can add a few tablespoons of milk. I have everything mentioned in the description box for you, how much cocoa powder I took, how much cake, I, uh, cake batter I added to it, how much milk I used. It's all ready mentioned in the description box for your ease. So this is what we're going to use for the double chocolate as well as the marble cake. Next, we're going to be making a red velvet. A red velvet is basically a mixture of a vanilla and a chocolate cake. So you need a very less amount of cocoa powder and some red food coloring. If you, don't, if you want a green velvet or a blue velvet, you can give it any shade that you like. I'm going with the classic red. And we're going to just put it to a side. Next is going to be a caramel pecan coffee cake if you don't like coffee or if you don't want to use it you can make a plain butter pecan cake that also turns out really well uh, but i'm using coffee right now and it gives a really nice strong flavor also you can adjust the amount of coffee you add to it depending on how strong or how mild you like the coffee flavor here i'm adding some chopped pecans and i'm going to be adding some caramel chips uh, into it if you don't have caramel chips you can skip it too next is a lemon poppy cake for that you will be needing a zest of half a lemon but make sure you don't go beyond the peel because that's where the flavor and the oil and everything lies uh, the middle layer that is pale in color is quite bitter so don't grate that and since i am using six flavors and i'm using a rectangle tray i'm uh, making squares for each flavor so that i can easily fit six in the tray i did the coffee cake and i also did the marble for the mar marble i just alternated a vanilla and chocolate a couple of times and then for the double chocolate one i'm adding some mini chocolate chips to make it even more rich and flavorful and to give it a nice chocolatey feel and uh, in the same way i'm adding the other flavors in squares i'm just trying to make sure that they're all the same height so that they can bake evenly and then i'm topping them up with some more toppings that i've added inside the cakes i'm just coordinating those and adding it up to the top and I'm doubling up uh, so that um, my cake doesn't burn in the bottom because it is fairly a large cake so I don't want it to burn in the bottom and I'm going to bake it at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes depending on how much batter and uh, what size of pan you used. I am adding some more chocolate and 
uh, some more caramel and the rest of the topping for the coffee cake. Um, this is a really cool trick that I usually do. I add chocolate over hot cake when it's right out of the oven. It melts the chocolate and it gives a really nice, um, nice melted chocolatey feel. It adds more flavor and you can completely skip adding frosting to it. Next, you can cut it up and serve it at your parties. This is so great for holidays. And I know I go through this all the time when one kid wants just something chocolatey and the other one wants just vanilla. Uh, so that way, everybody can have whatever they like. My personal favorite out of all of these are the parts that are a mix of flavors. Uh, like this one is a coffee cake and um, a coffee caramel cake and the double chocolate one. So do try this out, do let me know what other flavors you tried, how this turned out, and if you liked the recipe. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, the Homemaker Baker, over and out.